Well, actually, because uh, Hong Kong has, of course, a very long and special relationship with mainland China, we started uh, investing in mainland China the moment it opened up in 1979, which basically means that we are the only economy with over 30 years of experience uh, of working in China. What we do have is because of our long-term relationship with mainland China, we are now basically the largest investor in almost all provinces and major cities in mainland China. And we account for roughly, I think, about 47% of the total accumulated FDI into mainland China. So we're talking about a group that has long experience with dealing with mainland China, and we are fully uh, aware, of course, of the uh, legal and all other requirements uh, that will go into investment in mainland China. So what we do offer is the professionalism. Uh, when uh, Chilean firms uh, invest in mainland China, uh, they can do it various ways. Of course, there are some that may prefer to go direct. Uh, and generally, I would think that would be the bigger uh, Chilean companies who will have the resources and possibly the risk appetite to manage that. But I think for the more medium-sized enterprises, then it will be uh, perhaps a better way to manage the risk to go through Hong Kong because uh, you will have the protection of the legal system of Hong Kong and also you will have the professionals who are already very accomplished in terms of investing in mainland China. So that's why uh, we actually are a, a major, as I say, investor into mainland China. And of course, all the funds that come through Hong Kong do not necessarily just come from local Hong Kong people, but because overseas companies also make use of Hong Kong as a platform to go into uh, mainland China. So I think that's uh, one way also I would uh, welcome more Chilean companies to make use of. I think for financial services, uh, we are, in a way, in Hong Kong, very lucky because we are close. Uh, we are next to mainland China, and everybody knows that for mainland China, renminbi internationalization is a very big uh, direction for them. And therefore, because for Hong Kong, we have been uh, among the the top three uh, financial centers in the world for many years, and we do it by having very um, I think uh, transparent and uh, regulations that are on an international standards. So what we have would be certainly comparable to what you will get in UK, uh, and I hope uh, much less complicated than US. Uh, and but it is at an international level where there is high recognition of the uh, quality of uh, whether it's the funds or whether it's the, it's the uh, companies that are, for instance, listed on our stock exchange. So I think the first thing is to be able to be uh, very clear on your, um, on your regulations and that you will need to always be looking for uh, areas to bring it in, in line with international best practices. And that means streamlining, but yet uh, a certain of the uh, quality of the, uh, the companies that will come through your market. So that's number one. Uh, I think two, of course, is that uh, to develop your financial services, you need a big liquidity pool. And that comes from all sorts of reasons. Uh, well, one, because uh, well, your, your own local market is very attractive, or it is seen as a hub for a region. So for us, uh, in fact, in Asia, Hong Kong is clearly the hub. Of course, uh, you ha still have, say, Japan, which has a very big financial market, but it's much more uh, domestic focus. So for international, whether it is listing and so on, people look to Hong Kong by far. So, so I think that's uh, another thing, how to develop into the regional uh, focus. 
The third thing, of course, is uh, to be able to attract uh, money to come into the market. So uh, the certainty of the inflow and outflow is very important. In Hong Kong, we have, of course, no control uh, uh, in terms of the inflow and outflow of uh, foreign currencies. And that's, of course, vital for, for, for any international market. Uh, I believe that Chile already, of course, is doing that. But it's uh, how to make it even more attractive to get the money in. So that will perhaps look at the tax regime because money coming in and out are also looking at the cost of uh, a particular financial center. Uh, in Hong Kong, of course, our tax system is very uh, simple uh, and we basically only have the salary tax, uh, we, have the, uh, we have the corporate tax, uh, and we don't have capital gains tax, uh, inheritance tax, estate duty, none of that. So that actually makes it very attractive also for people who are looking to put their trust, uh, set up their trust or other uh, financial instruments in Hong Kong. being very innovative with your financial products, that you must be leading the times rather than always trying to follow what is already fully uh, established. So uh, with everybody talking about FinTech, I, I believe that that's certainly an area we need to look at, but it's not just the technology, but also the products that you actually develop to attract more international interest in putting money in your market versus everybody else. Very optimistic, I would say. Um, we signed the uh, FTA between the two economies in 2012, and uh, it comes into operation uh, last year in October. And what is good to see is that just in the first six months of uh, this year, both our import from uh, Chile uh, has grown, from, uh, grown 14% and our export to Chile has also grown 37.5%. Um, just uh, looking at the percentage, it seems that of course uh, we are benefiting, but what you should know of course is that the trade surplus is very much uh, in Chile's eye because we, we actually do import, as I say, a lot of the food products uh, and also copper from, uh, from Chile. And so I believe that as people get to understand even more uh, the advantages that is afforded under the, the free trade agreement, we should be able to see further growth. Um, I'm also uh, particularly um, optimistic because uh, I know that uh, our two economies are at the moment already talking about uh, investment protocol uh, so that because we believe trade and investment actually goes hand in hand. And in order to further promote the bilateral relationship between the two uh, economies, you must have the investment side as well. And so Chile and Hong Kong already being such free and open economies, I think that if we can uh, also include the investment side, then the potential for further uh, growth would be a lot more compounded because then our companies would be considering investing in say, I know the, the priorities are your energy, mining and infrastructure side, where actually we have a lot of companies that would be doing such investment around the world. And with Latin America being certainly one of the growth areas in the region, um, I believe having uh, an investment element to our relationship will certainly push our uh, economic relationship further. Mm -hmm.